All right, uh, another day, another commentary. Welcome, very happy you are here. I guess these are all going to be public instead of being on Patreon. <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, my name is Kyle Landon, and today we are doing the commentary for my album, Margot. Um, so this came out 2018. It was all done in 2017. It was the... I f it was made at the same time as Selfish Animal and Displaced. It was a... I mean, this is the the crown jewel. These eight songs are the tip-top of... Hold on, where did the milk drop go? There it is. These songs are the tip-top of the stuff I made in that era of time. Like, if you listen to anything, at least to me personally, I'm, so, I'm sure there's people who prefer Selfish Animal, but this... These eight songs, these are the cream of the crop of this time of my life, including the last song, The Boy in the Light, which I consider to be my all-time best song. Or definitely like a top three. I might have, maybe Church Mountain is up there. Uh, Totem as well. Existed is kind of the, uh, the newer Margot in that it is just, they're both eight songs, huh? Yeah. It's like that. So, um, yeah, this, this album has much more of a concept than anything else I've done up to this point in that the whole album, except for the last song, is supposed to represent like more of a, a female perspective. And it's, it's sort of an attempt at empathy. Not, not that I'm not empathetic, but just looking at things differently the best that I could back in 2017 when I was, what, like 20? Uh, I was like 20, yeah. Maybe 21. I don't know. But yeah, just each song is just like... I didn't want it to be all about love, but, but it's a lot of that. I had a lot of confusion going on, a lot of questions. <laughs> um I named it after a model that I found because someone posted somewhere that uh, a, a picture of her, and it, it was nothing about her, the picture. Everyone was making fun of, it was like chain mail. It was like a chain mail bikini or something. Just weird, but kind of, I kind of get the vibe in it in a way. And everyone was talking about uh, how ridiculous it looked. And I was more... Um, I, you know, in a word, I guess, infatuated with the, the model herself. <laughs> so I did a little digging. I figured out who she was, and uh, she be, she became a bit of a muse in a way. So I named the album after because it's an interesting name anyway. It's, I mean, the album's not about her necessarily, but I don't know. These things all just sort of coalesced at once. The picture here... I don't know why I chose green. No, I, I know why I chose green. I'll get to that in a second. But the picture is just a, like my neighbor's yard. And there's the sun and there's some uh, flowers that fell off of the tree. And I just put a, I just posturized it and colored it green. I just remembered why I colored it green. It's a, the girl I liked at the time, favorite color. You know, simple. <laughs> Not too much to think about. This is such a pretty... Uh, thing getting lost in this visualizer shout out to milk drop well let's sip some water let's just go ahead and get the album started with you with a what's in a name first <laughs> that's a hmm, not so calming of a visual but um yeah this song is like one of the very last things I made in 2017. Oh, and the album came out in a, on Valentine's Day 2018, because why not, of course. Um, did my dad know when he names me? So, but this whole song is lyrically is about how, basically my, my friend had gotten married recently when I was, was writing it. And I was thinking about them, and I was thinking about the effect, because she has a very common name. 
And、um, I was thinking about the effect of hearing that name once you're married to someone who has that name, and you hear that name, and you might hear it in a song, in a TV. You might hear just someone else talking to another one, calling for them. And there's that little jump in your heart every time you hear that name. So that's the whole concept of this song, basically. Just what's it? You know, did Dad know when he named me? Because of course the dad names the daughter always. But um, this, I I love this song, but I I did not write it for my range at all. But I think it helps. I think I can pull it off. But man, it is <laughs> aggressive. It is an aggressive start, especially for what I would consider to be a an art pop album. Listen to that. But um, yeah, it's just like we, us us men, us boys, we can get obsessive and we can get. Very one, tra- not that women and, and everyone else can't either, but we have one-track minds in a way that a lot of the times doesn't serve us in any way, and it can just be that name just echoing forever and ever, bouncing back and forth in our head. Just the name alone can inspire so much in us. Hear the acoustic guitars in the sides there. I love getting to use the acoustic guitar because I never do, <laughs> and I should use it more. I think. But man,、um, I've been waiting for a few months now. Yeah, that's something I remember reading about. Apparently, how、uh, women tend to,、uh, if they're ending the relationship, they will leave it mentally, like months ahead, before they actually do the breakup, so that it it hurts a lot less. <laughs> Just a decent strategy, but hurtful. <laughs> the instrumental, yeah. As I was saying at the beginning, this is one of the last things I did in 2017. This was right at the end, and I wasn't really planning for it to, to come out this way. But it kind of does feel like a cumulation, cum, cumulation of everything I've done up to this point, and that it's so detailed and there's so much going on. <laughs> It's it's like almost overwhelming, but I think if you're into this type of thing, then you'd be real into this. <laughs> and you got the the guitar, left and right, left, right, left, right. I'm very happy with this. Look at my opera notes <laughs> in the spectrogram. If you if you aren't into spectrograms, spectrograms, then I, I, that's a cool moment. I highly recommend you start just opening one up and just listening to your favorite singers and seeing how on pitch they are and see how clean their vibrato is and everything. <laughs> anyway, vanilla and ribbons. I swore to myself to never tell anyone what this name means. It's nothing too crazy or out there. It's a little crazy and out there, but it's nothing. It's not. It's not pertinent to the.、Uh, Meaning of the song. It's just an interesting title. I think this is one of my best instrumentals ever. But I'm not. I lo- I love the song, but I just feel. I don't know. I think it would sir. I think it would just be better as an instrumental. I'm. I re. I remember rewriting these vocals, the vocal lines, just the melodies themselves. I rewrote it like three or four times, and I'm still maybe just doing that. Just permanently put me in a state of being dissatisfied with it, but who knows? But yeah, this—you hear the why on from、uh, every other album I've done to date. It's the same exact sample. But this song's about、uh, getting stalked. It makes me very angry, especially now in the internet age. With Female streamers, content creators, whatever, seem to get the worst of it.、Um, and I don't. It's. 
it's pretty cut and dry. It's just I'm I'm getting stalked. This sucks. <laughs> That's pretty much the whole thing. I guess it's just me expressing like I'm sorry. My kind tends to do this. I'd kill them all if I could. Here's a nice little guitar moment. <laughs> but yeah, I think this. There, there's melodies that I like, and I like the fear my my own. I like that, but I almost feel like I could go without the verses. Or maybe I just need like a actual vocalist to sing it, and maybe I'll like it then. But yeah, this is all the, the drums are from battery. And all the instruments are uh, the M1, my favorite, except for the guitar that I'm playing. But all the, the chimes and yeah, it's just crazy. I love this. I'm just <laughs> listening to it. I, I would like to uh, disavow this part. Every girl has this man, they just don't know it yet. I, I mean, it's provocative, you remember it. But, uh. It's my favorite part. It's so powerful, this whole instrumental. But yeah, I, I regret implying that all women have a stalker. <laughs> they just don't know it yet if they don't know already. But provocative art, you know. I love this part. That sounds like I'm scraping against my guitar, but I'm actually picking really fast. <laughs> Just with the, the effect, the filter I had on it, it made it sound funny. But I love this ending too. The way everything fades out except for the chimes. It's, it mirrors exactly the way that uh, Gamma's theme from Sonic Adventure ends and starts start the way that song starts and ends. That was exactly what I was going for with this, because that song starts and ends with some weird mechanical noise. It's almost like a watery mechanical noise, and it starts with that noise. The song fades in, and then that noise comes fades back, and then that noise fades back in at the end, and the song fades out, and that, until it's just nothing but that noise again, like it was in the start. I wanted that to be like that. Anyway, the model slash skinny girls. I think this is one song, even though it, there's a splash and it's two songs. <laughs> this is two songs. Definitely the uh, the poppiest song here, and a, another song that I wrote completely out of my range. That I think I would like a lot better with an actual like like a female vocalist. But I love this song. It's what I think of first when I think of like what's a catchy song that I made. Expect. I guess this song is kind of based on Margot the model not not as much as her personally but just the idea of just being a model so just the stuff about makeup and price tags and vegan leather just it's not too deep. <laughs> it's almost a misogynistic statement there to claim that a, a woman is nothing more than her makeup. Hmm. If you think about it that way, at least. <laughs> it's also an interesting uh, we all like to see us fall. Implying like a crabs in the bucket type of thing. I don't know what I was thinking I was writing this, but it's provocative. <laughs> Just like that, uh, we're on to skinny girls. So this one's about, uh, just, you know, body expectations and beauty and all this. Again, listening to it now, I, I'm as... As a man, <laughs> I'm not, I don't think I would do this today. There's not much, a whole lot I could 
add to the conversation. But this part's interesting, the cameraman. I just remembered, I wrote, instrumentally, I wrote this first. I wrote the Skinny Girls part first, and then I wrote the model. And then I flipped them. <laughs> so you gotta start strong with the, uh, the pop. I love this line though. I am a paradise for lonely eyes. Can't hit these notes, but <laughs> the feeling is there. I gotta get some lessons sometime. <laughs> A lot of M1 in this song too. Yeah, I just, it's, <laughs> it's a cool song. Nothing else to really say about it. I do like the, this whole queen thing and the whole I'm doing, I already said all that. I don't know. <laughs> Wait for the next song. I mean, I'm just enjoying it right now. <laughs> That's an M1 drum kit too. <laughs> okay, this song, Halcyon Theory. I don't really have a Halcyon Theory. <laughs> I just thought it was an interesting title. But, um... I think jumping. This song was written because I was trying, instrumentally, I was trying to imitate the song, was it Cool Edge Night from Sonic Unleashed? I think it's Cool Edge Night. Yeah. But that, that song has like an electric organ sort of on the side, just playing the same chords over and over again. And I didn't know what a key was, I, you know, musically speaking, music theory. I didn't know what a key was. And if I did, I would understand, because there, let me, let me back up. In that Sonic song, there's so many, to me at least, it, it's very jazzy, has strings and horns and saxophones and this and that. And it just, I just felt like there's so many notes going on, all these notes and all these different instruments. What's going on? And, um... I was like, what's, what's the anchor? Because everything's doing so much and everything's changing. What is the anchor? That was what I considered a key at the time. I didn't understand. I thought, okay, what is the anchor? And originally I heard those organ, that little organ is playing like three chords. And it's kind of quiet, but you look for it, you hear it in the Sonic song. I was like, oh, that's the, that's the, that's the context. That's the anchor of the whole thing. So I made my own little organ three chord thing. And then I started doing all of the, so here's some, all the sax and the strings and everything, the bass line, the upright bass going. It's just a, one of the vocal lines chopped up because I didn't like how it originally was. Um, and I, I did my absolute best to pop off with the fake saxophone. I tried to make something that <laughs> maybe an actual saxophone player would try to cover at some point. Uh, the vocals here, which you might notice, not all of them, you don't hear all of them, but I decided to just leave it in anyway. Um, where am I? Yeah. This, it's just sort of a, a woman empowerment type of song. Not that I ever expected it to become an anthem or anything, but I just wanted it to, to present some sort of a just female power, female confidence. You know, because <laughs> I definitely know lots about that. I, don't know. I was trying, okay? Oh, that part. Just following the bass line. It's cool. Those are some, uh, some uh, Middle Eastern notes right there. I guess that's the Halcyon theory. <laughs> it's a 
time I'm here alive. Yes, yeah, it's very, very Sonic Unleashed nighttime coded. <laughs> oh, actually, this, the uh, this whole melody and yeah, this why can't these problems solve it? It's from a completely different song that I wrote in this era. Completely different song. Maybe I'll put it out someday. Someone remind me. But that yeah, that whole I re-recorded it for this, but I just I took it from that song and put it in here. Why can't these problems solve it? It was a much slower song. And now we are on relax. I can't even hear that piano right now. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to be negative. I do love this song, but I do feel like this is maybe the the worst. It's the less the least impressive song on this album, but it serves a really good, really personal um, purpose. I think instrumentally it kind of resembles, for me at least, it, and I think it was probably written like in like the same week as like uh, Filth of Oil. It's got similar things going on with the synths and stuff like that, but it is, they're probably both minor key, but this feels like slightly more major key. I guess if Filth of Oil is the minor key, which it might not be, then this is more like the Dorian or something, if you know what I mean. Not quite major, but not quite minor. Um, Cause I, as of as of now, I know music theory. <laughs> this song is about how I have I have a friend I'm very close with who is female, <laughs> and uh, I feel like and I guess for all of the it was this was to her specifically, but I guess at the time I was writing it, but I guess this was definitely just all the friends that I had that were girls at the time I felt like I would get into big trauma dumps and as emotional labor right here I, you must think I'm a confessional this song is about me what I'm assuming they're thinking about me as I'm dumping on them so this is them talking to me I'd rather go home you're starting to sound crazy sorry yeah, um, I was very distraught back then, and I was aware of it, and I hated it, but I would still do it anyway, as I was stupid and young. <laughs> but I'm still friends with all these people, I'm still close with all these people, so I, either they're very resilient, or they are, uh, or I wasn't as bad as I thought I was. <laughs> I love how the drums just sort of jump to me. Jump, speaking of jump. I'm six foot tall. <laughs> six feet short. In case you wanted to think of that as something. <laughs> Just a moment of silence. I do love this ending part. I love me a good brass section. I would love to have this played by like a big actual brass band so I'm taking a drink <laughs> Oh, this ending. Okay, um, my girlfriend gonna get mad if she hears this. Uh, there was a, not, not Marco, there was a different girl that, uh, I found on the internet, and I didn't stalk her or nothing, but I thought she was real pretty. And I remember I had a video of her playing on mute. She makes, she makes videos. Uh, and I just recorded all this guitar. This is, I think, four different guitar solos all going at once. And these are all recorded while I had just a video of her on mute playing. I should do that more, but with other things, not 
me being creepy with a girl. I wasn't being creepy. It's <laughs> playing music. All right, left blank. Um, I cried recording this, and this bums me out. <laughs> it's a very excellent song, though. Um, I've had the worst time mixing this. I don't want to talk about it too much, especially the uh, the big climax. I had a very hard time doing this. And I hope it sounds all right when I listen to it right now, when it comes up. But this whole song is sort of, it's me picturing those same girls I was talking about in a relax that I was friends with that I would see a lot, but I would also uh, be moody and trauma dump and this and that with them. And it, it's just another idea of them, like what if, I don't know, what if, uh, what, what if they died? <laughs> Or if they got in a car accident, you know? I guess this is me trying to encourage myself to uh, just speak my mind more and not be scared. Because even with all the trauma dumping I was doing, there was still a lot I would hold in, which probably would have resulted in them not being friends with me anymore, but who knows. The instrumental, I don't remember it being... I was just like, let me make something with the music box, and it just came out. Not too... Nothing crazy crazy. Look at my vocals, though. I still kind of have this problem. I'm trying to get over it. What's wrong? Nothing. <laughs> and then mentally, you're like, this, this, and this, and this. But also, you, you you get sort of a satisfaction just from being asked what is wrong. But you got to get away from You got to just say what's wrong. There's also a, a subtext of a of like a relationship either developing or of a, a relationship wanting to be started. Of course. I mean, you can hear when I break in the song. With this part, you know, coming up. I think I would do this vocal vocal a lot better now. <laughs> I've, I've got a lot more control of my falsetto chest, whatever you call it, a head voice, whatever. I don't know. I need to be taught though. Yeah, this is me saying like, okay, you got something to say, you better say it before someone dies. Thankfully no one's died, but I'm an artist. I gotta be dramatic about these things. Just sort of the, as I float to heaven, I learned what you wanted. Here's sort of, I guess, death in a way, what it might sound like. Just everything sort of melting together and distortion and fuzz until you can't recognize it. But, um, yeah, maybe the fact that uh, maybe, maybe once you die, you, you gain full access to the collective consciousness or whatever and all the things that you never said the the deceased immediately become aware of so why hide anything if we're all gonna die <laughs> um, and then let me go let me breathe again that's completely that's the, the character who just died in the story and begging god more than anything you're not talking to me at this point and then all these lyrics it's more fun for the lyric readers out there, these uh, you can follow the melody with the lyrics, and then it's very clear. Uh, <laughs> it would ruin what we had. I just wanted to be your friend. Uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> and if that person does die, which no, they aren't. They won't. <laughs> they have it. Uh, don't don't live the rest of your life in regret. Just go on and live your life. <sighs> heavy. We only got two songs left. Um. Yeah, it's a rough one, but I love it. All right, Limerence. Seven and a half minutes, and then Buena Light is what, 8.14? <laughs> I haven't memorized. Okay, Limerence. So this is about another girl that I was, uh, the, the girl whose favorite color is green. Um, let me get my posture straight, because I'm talking like, I'm talking with all the fry right now. Um, this was just another song. I, didn't, I wasn't really thinking much writing the song, but uh, I, I just sort of wrote it, and it came out this way. But uh, these look like little spermies. <laughs> they look like little spermies swimming around. But I just wanted to write something cool. And the lyrics, I'll, I'll talk about the guitar solo when we get there. But um, the lyrics here is about the girl who likes green. I was, ta I was on and off talking to her. It was more friendly than anything else, but I was—I had feelings and this and that, whatever, whatever. And um, this song is just me wondering, like, because I would text her usually like Fridays or Saturdays, and I, I was home every day, not doing nothing, unemployed, no school, nothing, 20 years old, and she was uh, in college at a college somewhat nearby not too far away and uh it was this song's me wondering like okay i could text her and maybe we can hang out or just have a nice conversation this or that but like i'm but like okay I'm, she's a college girl she's pretty this and that she's always been sociable there's no way that she's uh she doesn't have anything better to do on a friday or saturday night so the this song is sort of me like figuring like okay maybe like, of course, it's Friday night. You think I have nothing better to do than sit and talk to you? Don't you got something else going on? But then also there's the other side of the coin, the Schrodinger of it all. It's a Saturday night. Please call me. I only want to talk to you. What what else could you be doing right now? So who? who? I'll never know until I find out. But I just sort of let the, that slip through my fingers. <laughs> Everything that happens is meant to happen. No regrets. I say with pain in my voice. <laughs> um, I just, I just love this song. I love this part. I love. I don't have. I need more space in my music. I need more, just stuff to let let it breathe. But I wanted this song to start to be sort of a transition into Boy in the Light, because now there's also. There's a, a lower voice doubling the higher voice. And that's supposed to be like, okay, the guy's here. And then eventually there's going to be the baton pass to the male perspective from the last song. A lot of conversations in that park, in a parking lot. <laughs> Okay, right there. If you look at the lyrics, that's how she would, would spell okay. I truly am a, a lover. <laughs> There's a whole new part of the song. Uh, just It just sort of happened, I guess, because I really, really, really love all these instruments. I was like, can I do anything else with these instruments? And I did. So why not? This is me telling myself that I got nothing to contribute to this girl. <laughs> Yeah. 
around this part in the instrumental when I was writing it I uh had a really bad crash in FL Studio and I lost a lot of progress but I like I recovered it but I'm not sure if I did I just I don't know if I lost anything good or not I don't know it was a real rough process to get it back that I've never had a crash like that before or since <laughs> thankfully but yeah but I love the song and I wanted I figured like okay this might be my best album ever this might it's it's short it's sweet it's to the point but it's still my style it's still me it's the best I could do I gotta have a guitar solo somewhere in here I gotta express that I play guitar <laughs> so I, I purposefully just constructed all of this to be as just big and huge and dramatic as I could even though I am a trash guitar player I just wanted to fake it and I did get it in one take eventually but I remember very well recording this <laughs> but uh, in the uh, files if you look at it in the project in FL Studio this is called the uh, heavy metal solo of the future <laughs> build here. song kind of is whatever I don't know what tuning this is in this might be open C Devin Townsend tuning It's just it's all I could ask for from this sort of moment. You know, just a big, valiant guitar. Okay, well, there's one song left, and I need to pause before it starts. So, uh, The Boy in the Light is next, the final song, 8 minutes, 14 seconds. Um, it's pretty much my best song. <laughs> I mean, I haven't had as long with, like, Church Mountain, I haven't let Church Mountain sit in my system yet, the way this song has. Um, but the reason why I pause is because there was originally going to be a an interlude here before The Boy in the Light started. And the girl that half these songs are about, whose favorite color is green, was going to read a monologue that I had written. And um, she originally agreed to it, but it just sort of fell through. And um, if I can, I find it. I have, I definitely have it, but can I find it quickly? Uh, hold on, let me just be real professional here. Yeah, I found it here. Should I, should I? Hmm. I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna read it. Okay. This is weird. I'm glad she said no. Overall, I, I think just having the uh, album, ha having Limerence go straight into The Boy in the Light works because if I if I had these words, my uh, my immaturity and my fandom of Goodnight Pun Pun kind of shows up here. <laughs> Let me read it. I, I've never read this out loud before. Let's see. Some boy told me that I should grow bangs. The nerve of him. He stuttered. He must have repeated it to himself a hundred times, and he still messed it up. So this is your life? You lose a little sleep, make some art, and expect everything to fall into place because of it? All of those feelings, and you can't even show them. Do you regret your life? He looked at the floor in silence. Then he told me that he always loved me. He told me that I'm the most beautiful girl he's ever seen, 
that his heart drops every time he looks at me. Thank you. <laughs> I asked him if he knew how long he made me wait for him. I asked him if he really thinks that I still cared about him. I told him that he wasn't strong enough to hold me. His hands never left his pockets. We both knew he was afraid of me. And then there's a note here. If I have her read it, have her go over those two lines a few times. Then, what, what two lines? There's only one line. <laughs> then tell her that I really may. Oh, this is me trying to psych myself up. Then tell her that I really mean both of those things. Tell her to, fl <laughs> this is like the doctor psychotic. Have a, have a, um, his, his notes, do, do a dramatic exhale at, after this line. Tell her to flip the page for that last, I guess I was going to print this out. Tell her to flip the page for that last line. This is embarrassing. That she did not know was there. Record the sight read, deal with the consequences. What, what is the last line? I must have erased it or something. There's no, we both knew he's afraid of me. It's not a crazy thing. And then repeated here a bunch is dreams don't come true until you wake up. Dreams don't come true until you wake up. <sighs> That's embarrassing. <laughs> you know, it's not embarrassing though. The boy in the light. So, I just improvised this part. Actually, this this song, whereas uh, What's in the Name was one of the last things I wrote in 2017. The Boy in the Light, this started, the instrumental is called <laughs> Jennifer Conley. Because I just saw a Requiem for a Dream and I was enchanted and disturbed. And uh, this originally started, like that fuzz, that That's originally what the song was. This, this song had a lot of revisions, but I'm very happy that it ended up the way that it did. And this, when I, when I came up with this melody, I knew that, okay, I have something. This is something, I gotta make it something. And eventually the guitars came in. I say Jennifer right there, if you listen closely. Let's just start it. Innuendo, rare thing I never do in my lyrics. My young bag, look, look back at me. Yeah, it's all it's more innuendo, innuendo. I guess there, there's definitely, it's not just a boy perspective, it becomes a conversation at points. Sort of the sung parts are a female, and the the rapped, yelly parts are male. For at least this first part. But yeah, I wanted this instrumental to just feel live. I wanted there to just be so much dynamic, dynamicism, dy dynamics, whatever, <laughs> and um. Just the, the layers and layers of guitar all doing different things and just, I don't know, this felt, this felt way above my pay grade, my, my level at this point, <laughs> my, my ability. There's a reference to a selfish animal. There's a couple of references in this song. Sort of a, another metal song with no distorted guitars. That was gonna be a vocal melody, but I was like, I can't do that. <laughs> yeah, I just kept adding to the song. Every time I would open up the project, just keep adding. I should keep doing that. Hopefully I don't get, all the songs don't get too busy. This is a melody. This, my friends are getting married. That's from, I think, 20, 2015 or 2016. That's an old song of mine that I took, this out, took that out of. I figured I'd put that in, why not? 
1.25 seconds away. That's the uh, how long it takes light to get here from the sun, right? I think. That's a cool line. Just always go, 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 even if I need to stop. What is the light exactly? I'm not sure if I exactly know. I mean, the light is the only way. Is are the guard? Hold on. The gardeners here. Hold on. I need. I need to pause the recording. Okay, I think they're in the backyard now. But I closed my window just to be safe. I'm gonna die of heat stroke, but it is what it is. Um, the I had some time to think about what the light is, I guess. Thinking about, I don't know what it was when I was writing it. I don't know what I was thinking exactly. I mean, there's references to the sun and to street lights, and but what I think it is, is just like this blinding UV light on every aspect of my life and just constantly just marinating and festering in my mistakes and my problems. It's that UV light exposing everything and not really doing anything about it. It's not cleansing anything. It's not bringing attention to these. And this is something I've learned years later, however many years it's been. Has it been seven years? It's not been seven years. Um, I've only learned recently since I started going to therapy that like, you can't just bring attention to problems and like that there, you did it. You have to then take action and correct your mindset and your thoughts and address the issues. Just calling it out is not going to do anything. And of course it's obvious, but you, when, you, when you're an artist and you're so absorbed by your emotion because that's, that's your, your bread and butter in a way, that's the, it's, it's our job is to feel and to feel even more than regular people feel and express that feeling and capture it forever and ever for people to listen to and enjoy and relate to. But that doesn't actually solve any of it. Anyway. So yeah, this is your life. It's just me just being ashamed of myself for being unsuccessful. I love how that distorted guitar sounds and I did not save that setting and I don't, it's just, it's baked. <laughs> it, it's, it's like that sometimes. Live and you learn. I love this. I, I love little instrumental breaks. I need more of them. Here's a nice little chill, spacey section. So that was life. <laughs> a real quick life there. There's the all we need is each other from uh, from my dreams since I was a kid and from um, Ghost of You. Hello and goodbye, which I didn't talk about in what's in the name. It's just like aloha and stuff. There's a lot of languages that have hello and goodbye, the same word. I just thought that was interesting. <laughs> what next spot? Move to what next spot? I didn't move anywhere. My screens, though. Two of them. Yeah. And then this part, this is, you, you must headbang. You must. I will. Yeah. Yeah. had to be powerful I just need I just knew this had to be so powerful and big and loud and full that's a reference to one of my friends she doesn't like her food to touch <laughs> it's like how do you survive Thanksgiving that's the whole point of course I did
I've learned you gotta be careful when you're doing stuff like this because it's gonna implant in your subconscious. It's gonna make you act and it's gonna make your life go a certain way that you may not want it to go. <laughs> but I'll be right. I'll be alright. And I am alright. I'm just getting better. Well, there's a reference to me moving away suddenly and not talking to my friends anymore. And that's a good line. Never stop growing up. I feel like I'm just talking to my old self now. I need more guitar parts with the, or just parts in general with these different ascending and descending lines like that. I had to say Marco's name at least once. And me too. You must be so tired, just barely there in the in the, the cracks. If you listen close, the gardeners are back. <laughs> Goodness, I can, uh, hold on, let me, oh, wrong song, sorry, oh, goodness, sorry that the, uh, gardeners are back, I thought they were in the backyard, I don't know why you would start in the front yard and then go to the backyard and then come back to the front yard, but, um, yeah, these, this last line, I feel like this, this sums up, like, I wanted it to sum up everything as far as how I felt about myself and my relation with just the idea of women and relationships and this and that. I keep hiding, I'm so scared. Of course, I've been that way up until recently, <laughs> this whole time. Can spot all the problems, but that don't solve any of them. And then I just want to meet me, so I must keep breathing. Let me in your house again, the failures of a trillion men. So that, that's sort of, in a way, just me trying to of course, I could never apologize for all of the ways in which men specifically have wronged women and humanity and ourselves in general. I could never even quantify that. But in a way, that's just, just I guess by, well, again, it's the whole thing. It's I, I state that there's been failures of a trillion men, but that's no solution. <laughs> but I guess it's a start. I guess it's a start. I just want to meet me, so I must keep breathing. I just, I just have to keep going on. I just gotta keep striving in life, and uh, you know, apologize for, for gardener sounds. And uh, I'm not rich enough to pay. Don't, don't think these are my gardeners. These are my dad's gardeners. I'm not. I'm still living here, okay, as of recording. But I won't be here for much longer. We leveling up. I'm uh, I'm meeting me because I kept breathing. And I guess I can end off with that. A message to you as well. Just keep breathing. It's going to be okay. <laughs> There's grass getting cut. Got to smell the grass. I am hungry. Thank you so much for your support, for listening and for listening to me ramble. Uh, you have a good rest of your day. Be well. Think good thoughts. I was about to say Kyle Landon out, but I don't say that. Kyle Landon out. <laughs>